You have seen me hunt out of tree saddles. <laughs> I am crazy. You've seen me try to hunt out of a climber. I've hunted on the ground with a ghost blind. I love hunting out of a pop-up blind, no problem with that. But mobility is key, and I'm here to talk to you about what I believe is the absolute most mobile setup out there for us as crossbow hunters, and that is hunting from the ground. Holy cow, it's like we forget that we can hunt from the ground. Everything has to be from a tree these days, right? Well, why does it have to be from a tree? If you want to be mobile, don't carry something with you where you got to climb up and down, hunt from the ground. You don't have to carry any equipment for trees. For starters, let's talk about us as crossbow hunters. What do we need? Well, we need a crossbow, something like this. The size of crossbow, a more modern sized crossbow, is fantastic for mobile ground hunting because you can carry it and walk with it like this, not a problem. It's very easy to maneuver. And the nice thing is the low profile. I put this in front of me. As you'll see, I'm sitting here and there's not a lot of square inches for deer to pick up on. Low profile, that's key. For your crossbow, you're going to need some sort of tripod to set the crossbow on. You can hunt off your knee if you want, that's great, but what I'm finding out with ground hunting is our shots are going to be a little bit further out. We're not going to get away with 10, 20 yard shots, typically, unless you're a much smaller guy. When we talk about low profile, I am not low profile. I'm the opposite of low profile. I'm high profile, I guess. You know, I take up a lot of a lot of room, a lot of square inches of me sitting in the grass. And if I'm sitting on the edge of a field, deer are going to pick me off if I'm not really, really careful. For that reason, I try to set back in the grass pretty good with a nice breakup of all the grass and limbs and in front of me. And if I have all of that in front of me, it gives me a little bit more natural camouflage. For that reason. This little contraption is my tripod, my filming tripod, with my shooting tripod attached. My Scorpid quiver, little grip quiver, grips right on there. You can snap that on, snap it on. Just don't get your fingers in there and you're good to go. These ties are fantastic and I use orange ones because that way I can find them when it gets dark. I can find the things and find them in the grass, pick them up. My Caldwell Deadshot Field Pod, really like this thing. Boy, it's covered with dirt mud. I was sitting in a ground blind with it last night and had it used down here. So you can use it in a ground blind this way too. But I've modified it, right? You remember this had the arms sticking out and little grips for your crossbow to sit on and all that good stuff. I don't like that. I don't like that. I like the bog death grip. I like something gripping my crossbow so that crossbow will not move. So it stays put. This, I can open it up, put the OB in there, bungee fits right in there. I can tighten it up and put the SWAT X1 in there if I want to. So it holds a variety of crossbows. The ones with the contour grips on the foregrip and all that stuff, like the Scorpion, it really doesn't like that. That likes the, the arms, right? That wants the field pod style for the Scorpion. But this crossbow is too short for the field pod style. It doesn't work. It's too short, but it likes this just fine. So what I do is I set this in front of me and put the crossbow in it. You gotta be a little careful because I've got the Burris Oracle X remote on the front. I also have this little level on here that I put on. I do recommend you get one of those for longer distance shots. At 20 yards, canting the crossbow is not gonna make much difference, right? Or any difference at all. 30 yards makes a little more. 50 yards, all of a sudden, it's crucial that we have it set up perfectly. The Burris has a built-in level too, but you know, may not be as sensitive and it can't hurt to have an additional one. So I'm looking right down the barrel, looking at that little level, looking through the scope, and now I can sit like this. With this crossbow, if I'm sitting on the ground and I have this crossbow sitting in front of me, it adds a little bit of camouflage now, doesn't it? It adds a little bit more breakup. And what I do, I have some camouflage netting that I can hang off of here and you can use your ties, right? and hang your netting off of this too so it gives a little bit more breakup and makes your tripod like this look like a stump. It's almost like a miniature blind where I'm sitting behind it. It's just a little bit more breakup in front of you. If you don't have one of these, you don't have a tripod, you want to do something different, I have done it with a shooting stick. The shooting stick is fantastic because you're going to have the ability to hold that crossbow a little bit more steady. In 
a situation where you're shooting at 40, 50 yards, right? A longer shot. It's mandatory that you have some sort of rest, in my opinion, beyond shooting offhand, right? Maybe your knee is good enough. Maybe not. Maybe the shooting stick is good enough. I sat in the backyard and I shot at 50 yards or so to make sure that I could shoot off that shooting stick. And it worked for me. I felt comfortable with that. And you know, the minute you set that crossbow on there, you know if it's going to work or not, don't you? You've been there just like I have where, yeah, I, I'm not going to hit that, right? I don't feel comfortable with that. Look at this sweet little setup. So I'm trying to be as mobile as possible as I get ready for my state game lands hunting that I'm going to attempt this afternoon. This is a Primos shooting stick and it not only props the crossbow up nicely, but I can sit on the ground, as you can see, I've been sitting here, and I shot off of it. I've shot at three different distances, and let's go see how beautiful this looks. We'll walk right down there and I'll show you. Now I shot, the target's been down there. I sat in three different spots, and I moved my body. I only put out one target. Now I'm shooting practice points only. These are hacker practice points. Not shooting the field points, because we already, we're already in the season. Bungie, Bungie and I killed two deer already. Bungie 4.0, that crossbow up there, actually killed my biggest buck ever. And so we're knee deep in the season. We don't need field points anymore. No, not during the season. We're just making sure that we are accurate with the practice points so that when we're hunting, our broadheads will function properly. Now, shot number one was at 22 yards. That is the O. I was shooting at the O at 22 yards. Kaboom. Hit the O. Second shot was at 35 yards, according to the Burris Oracle X. And I was shooting for the center of the heart. And look what I hit. The center of the heart. This is 47 yards. Probably the farthest I'd shoot in a hunting situation. But look at that. I was shooting for the center of that black area next to the K. Shooting for the center of that. And boom. That's what I hit. That's a good looking target. Ah, we got a poker. <laughs> I'm shooting at this side because I'm shooting the practice points and they chew the targets up real good when you pull them out. So that is why I'm shooting, instead of shooting at the dots, you know, that's why I'm shooting at the, the graphic side. I usually don't even use the graphic side as you can tell. So, but that's working really good. I'm really happy with that. Just to give you a view here, look at that. All the way up across the lawn, I was sitting clear up there in that last shot at 47. You can barely see the crossbow up there. We'll zoom you in. We'll zoom inify the crossbow sitting up there, old B4. With this thing, it's like, I don't, as long as I don't move it, I mean, it ain't moving, right? I mean, it's just locked down. It's locked down. I can't go anywhere. So all I got to do is just not jerk it all over when I pull the trigger. I look through there, pull the trigger, right? And if you get comfortable with that, you force yourself to keep your eye open and watch that Luminoc fly through the air. You will have no trouble shooting your crossbow off a of rest like this. The shooting stick is even more mobile because it's a lot lighter and you don't need all this contraption. Now, you don't get the benefit of the blind that this creates, maybe, right? So there's a benefit to this, too. The shooting stick, the problem was when the deer are coming out, when I'm getting ready to take a shot, I got to pick it up, put the crossbow on it. You can set it all together and just stand it up when the deer aren't looking. But if you got four deer in front of you, the chances are always good that one of them's looking at you. You know, that's the problem. Whereas with this, it's always sitting there looking at the deer anyway. It's always ready to go. Problem is then, you know, they see this. This looks like a giant eyeball to a deer. If they're close enough that they can see this, that's an eyeball, right? A deer is going to look at us at eye level, right? This is the height of a coyote. Think of that, right? This is predator height when you're hunting from the ground. And they see this eyeball, right? And the first thing the deer's thinking is, where's the other eyeball? <laughs> to get this head on here, I just bought one of these heads off Amazon.com, the bog head, right? The vice type head. And then with the Caldwell Deadshot Field Pod, I took out the screw that holds, there's two pieces. There's one like this and one like this to hold those arms on. I just took the screw out and then you can take the top half of that off. The bottom half is still on there. I got a new screw from a hardware store, the same size but a little bit longer, and screwed this head onto it. Just screwed it down. It is on there tight, working perfectly. 
Um, the rest of it, the original piece, I still have. I can put it back together at any time. I just zip tied it all together and stuck it away on a shelf. And I don't know if I'll ever go back to using it. Honestly, I do like this setup. I really do appreciate it. I want to thank friend of Bungie George for that idea. All right, so and that snaps right out of there when you're done with it. You can take it right out of there and set it down. I got to wipe down that crossbow. It was very muddy in the blind last night hunting with that. The other thing I'll show you, and a very similar concept, is my filming tripod. Now, I don't hunt if I can't film. Most of you guys don't have to worry about this. May not be interested in it, but in case you are, here you go. I have a little tripod, little $20 job that I bought years and years ago. Actually, I bought like a dozen of these things, and I just throw them away when they break or take the parts off or whatever else. But it is a, and some people are asking about this too. Get on eBay or Amazon. You can pick up one of these little mounts for your cell phone, adjustable. I've got an S22 that I'm filming on right now. Love that phone, but it's very big. This opens up and even fits with that phone with the OtterBox case on it, not a problem. The other problem with bigger phones is you got more eyeballs, right? The lenses look like eyeballs. I'm, I worry about that kind of stuff. But cheap old little head, this is like seven bucks. It snaps right on and you, I just screw this onto there. So you got it there. You can also use my camera clamp mount. There's a design for that. There's a video I did of that. Look up Death by Bungie camera clamp and it will bring you to that video. And you will watch that video and you'll understand what I'm talking about with a clamp that you can put on a, tri on a tree stand or a lot of different locations. I use them with the tactic and everything else. But this I set up in front of me, same thing, camouflage netting hanging off of it. You can use the other twister on there if you want to hang that netting, right? And then just wrap, you know, strap everything back together when you're done. But this sits off right here where I can see the phone and where I can modify this and move it if I need to do so. But otherwise, it's sticking out in front of me. I also have those tactic cams on a remote, so they're set up off to my left or right or whatever, depending on the setup. But that's a handy little uh, thing to have too. And that way you can film. And they both sit out in front of you. They both give you more breakup, kind of, you know. So they're pretty handy to have. Now, here is the big thing people don't think about when they think about ground hunting. And I am telling you the absolute killer in a ground hunting situation is movement. And I, the older I get, cannot sit still. I rooch left and right all day long. The only way for me to prevent that is comfort. And comfort's very important. So this I've had for years. I did not buy it for this purpose, but it seems to be working. And I'm going to get this out of your way so you can see what I'm talking about. But this seems to be working. A lot of people think these things are a joke, right? This is a turkey chair slash vest. And it sits on the ground like this. And it's got a real thick padded seat right here. Now I want to tell you, um, and, it, and basically what's cool about it is I can wear it into the stand, right? If I can put it on, but I can wear this into the into the ambush site, wear it right into the woods like this. Got all my gear in here. It's kind of a nuisance. I don't like to carry as I want to carry as little stuff as possible. I don't want to carry an extra backpack. I just put my necessities in here, the stuff that I'm going to carry with me. You got to make sure you have it all. And if you're switching between this setup and the tree stand setup, kind of a nuisance because you got to take everything out of this and put it back in your backpack, and vice versa. My backpack actually fits in here, so I don't have to take everything out of here and put it in here. I can just put that in this. Pretty sweet. You carry this in, you wear it. You know, it works pretty good. And then when you get there, this little guy kicks out. You know, you fold it up and walk like that. And then when you get there, you kick that back and you sit on it. Um, and it gives you a backrest, right, which you don't get sitting on the ground. Unless you're sitting up against a tree or something like that. But here, I can sit on the edge of a field, okay, and I can lean back and get comfortable and sit on that seat, on that cushion, and we don't have a problem. It actually has worked very well. I can sit pretty pretty still on this setup. What I did too, spray it down with permethrin. You're hunting on the ground, you're going to be right there at ground zero for ticks and chiggers and all that other stuff. I soak the outside of this ahead of time, let it dry according to the instructions with Sawyer permethrin, spray it on there, good, put half a bottle on there or something, right? And just soak it, let it sit out there. And then I hung it out for a couple days when it wasn't raining, let it dry good and air out. And then I keep it in a scent free garbage bag so that it remains scent free. But this stuff won't leave an odor on there that bothers deer too much. But any bugs that crawl on this suit will die, okay? before they get to you. 
I also do that with my clothes and I do it with my boots. The last thing I want to mention to you is boots. Boots are important. Early season, when I was hunting on the state game land with this setup, I wore these boots. And one of the things I noticed was that when you're sitting on the ground, my feet are out like this. So the deer are seeing a big black thing sitting there with the eyeballs, you know. So what I've done, I spray painted these. Now, it's gonna create a natural camouflage. Soak this good in a lighter paint, maybe. And then the parts where you walk is all gonna wear off. And the remainder of it though, there's a little bit of break up there. So I feel pretty good about that. Actually, I mean, I feel more comfortable that way. So maybe the deer do too, who knows? So it can't hurt, but be conscious of the fact that the soles of your feet are gonna be pointing at the deer, right? When they're walking by, they see your feet, they see the tripods, you know, or whatever. And we gotta make all those things less conspicuous. That's what we're looking for, right? You don't wanna stand out all that much. You can throw a ghillie suit in there too, if you want. That they've got their place, right? The leafy suits and all that stuff. I would definitely spray them down with this. Problem with ghillie suits for me is that they catch on everything under the sun. You're out there in the field and you come home and you got twigs and leaves and everything else that you sat around or you walked by. It just seems to collect in you like a magnet. And I guarantee you it is a nest for just about every insect species in the state where you live by the time you're done with it. So spray it down, get rid of those, right? And store it in a bag and tuck it away and all that. Keep it away from the mice because they'll, they'll eat up your ghillie suit too. I got to tell you, it was a lot of fun in the early season. I don't have a lot of time to hunt now because I, once October hit, I'm, you know, Pennsylvania opens in October and I'm starting a new job in October now. So I'm at my new job. So I don't have, I have only the weekends and the recognized holidays off to go hunting. That's all I've got. And in Pennsylvania, by weekends, I mean Saturday, right? That's all I've got pretty much to hunt. In the two weeks leading up to it, I had an opportunity to drive to a different part of Pennsylvania and hunt on some state game lands that were opened early. They opened two weeks early. And I had a great opportunity down there, a great time down there going out and looking for some deer. And I saw lots of deer. They had some food plots, some big giant fields of clover that I was able to hunt over. And it was just a great time. I got to try out all of this equipment and it seemed to work perfectly. I had opportunities on deer, didn't take those opportunities because I was just coming back from Maryland and Genevieve and I brought five deer, can you believe that, five deer back with us from Maryland. You've seen all of those videos, go check them out if you haven't. We really only shoot big bucks, that's all we do, so <laughs> that's all we're looking for. But in all seriousness, so far it's been a blast with this crossbow. My next video will talk more about this crossbow. And i got another video coming on the Burris Oracle X. Updates as the season progresses. As information comes in, I share it with you, friends of Bungie. So make sure you stay tuned for those. But i got to tell you, this has been a fun way to hunt. I'm not sure it's my favorite way. But for mobility and for state game lands, it has proven to be an effective way to hunt. And I'm really enjoying it. And it lends itself well to filming. All that adds up to let's keep doing it as far as I'm concerned. Again, before you go doing this stuff, test it all out. Get in the backyard. Take those shots. See where you're comfortable with at what distance. And good luck out there. And all hail Bungie.